Welcome back everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. In today's video, we are going to be tackling the oiling system on uh, the EJ257. The reason I chose to do the oiling system first is because um, we need to get the pump on so that we can get our crank sprocket on because I can't set any of the timing components until that's on. So um, we got some new parts from IAG. Um, we got a pickup, a windage tray, a new 11 millimeter pump from Subaru, and then we're going to be reusing the cooler and our stock pan, but we're going to modify the pan a little bit. So let's get all this stuff unboxed. We'll show you guys what it looks like, and then we'll move on to doing the oil pump. All right, so we got some new O-rings. This is for the dipstick, and this is for the inside of the oil pan. Um, it's for your drain. So cool, it comes with all new hardware. Um, it comes with the uh, O-ring for the inside, as well as the front seal. So that's pretty cool. I'll, I'll give it to them for the wrapping. That's <laughs> ridiculous. All right, so we got the OEM oil pump right here. So there's really three variations from what I understand as far as oil pumps. The one that was on my car is a 10 millimeter pump. This one's an 11 millimeter pump. And then you can get the JDM um, 12 millimeter pumps. Uh, this one seems sufficient enough for me. It should do what I want it to do. And I'm stoked that it's OEM. So we got all the oil pump stuff. Now the fun stuff. So this is IAG's um version two pickup pretty sick look at the welds look at the welds so beautiful this piece is really nice and uh subarus notoriously have failures on the oem dipstick right here i'll actually grab one real quick because i wanted to point this out yeah so if you can see the stock one i don't know if you can tell but to me it looks like these are brazed together which I'm not saying is a bad thing. I just don't know if that's, you know, factory spec. Does every dealer, does every company do that? So, but anyway, so we got a beautiful IAG piece that's going to replace that. And so now to top it all off, um, I wanted to get a windage tray. There's supposedly a bunch of different types you can get. But we got a pretty crazy one. So it's like a dual windage tray. There's like a small one you can buy where it's just this. And then there's this style, which has like these rubber flap drain backs in it. So pretty cool. So we will still move on to the pump first and then we'll get these nice, nice parts installed. So it may have been a little bit overkill on the sealant, but I like to go around the bolt holes because it seems to give more of a level seal when you push it onto the face of the block. So we got to clean that up real quick. We have our O-ring in, but I'm going to put a dab of uh, Ultra Grey on that as well just to hold the O-ring in so when we slide it on, it doesn't move. So you want to put a little dab of oil or assembly lube or something over here so that when you try and fit your, um, your pump, the seal on the front of it doesn't bind on this. It needs to have a nice slick surface. All right, so we're about to install the uh, IAG baffle tray and the pickup. They do say in the instructions from IAG that they want you to go ahead and remove these two bottom bolts when you get it, because you just install the bottom section of it first, and then you're gonna add the tray onto the top of it. So it um, you'll, you'll follow us, because I'm following IAG.
So this is the piece that goes in first. All right, so we just finished up putting the baffle and the pickup in. That all went really well, but we're gonna move on to the pan. I am gonna be reusing the OEM pan because $500 for an aftermarket pan is a lot of money. And so, but one thing we need to modify though, and I'll try and point it out, hopefully you guys can see it, is you notice down there, it has like a little shield over the drain plug hole. That's stupid. But I actually, it's kind of ironic because I had a magnetic drain plug in the car before and I never noticed that it was like pushing up against that little baffle pin. Yeah, I kind of electrical taped it, but maybe you guys can see in there that there's some markings on there from my magnetic drain plug. So we gotta get rid of that because I still wanna be able to use a magnetic drain plug. And honestly, eventually I would love to do an aftermarket pan because it's just a bad design and I'm not really a fan of it. But for now, we're just gonna do it this way. I'm just gonna try and drill that hole out so that when the magnet goes through, it's not binding. And then we'll seal it up. I hope we have enough of this left, we'll see. And I'm really, unfortunately, have to use this because it's gonna take forever with the little squeeze tube, but we're gonna try. So we got the pan hollowed out. Hopefully you can see. See the inside. It's not pretty, but it doesn't need to be. Um, if you come over here in the light, you see all the metal shavings that we left behind. So we gotta clean this pan super good. Honestly, I'm stoked to be doing it with the motor out of the car, but I just hate doing them. So same process as any other like sealant is I'm gonna hand tighten them down in kind of like an X pattern and then we'll wait an hour for them to dry. Everyone does it different, but this is the way I do it. All 
All right, so I don't know if you guys could tell from the last clip, but the torque wrench was kind of freaking out on us, but we got everything figured out, the pan's on, everything's good. So really the only thing we have left to do now is the oil cooler. As you can tell, this oil cooler is pretty gross. Oh no. The oil cooler is pretty gross, so we're gonna clean this up. We're gonna put my Gretti magnetic drain plug back in. And then also, I think the only other thing is the seal plug that goes to it. So we'll put that in as well. And that should wrap up the oiling system. OEM Subaru. This is gonna be like the icing, I guess, on the cake. Kinda wonder if I should put a little oil in here. Let it soak up. No? You put your filters in dry bed? <laughs> <laughs> but nothing's in it right now. I know. I guess we can always take it back off. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> All right, so if you guys made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. You guys get to see what's in our secret package. This is going to kind of dictate a little bit of the route we take with the engine. So let's open it up. So it's like, if you guys know the logo, you'll know the logo. I guess it kind of had the name right there. Anyway. So I've seen Illuminati's parts all over the place and I've always wanted a reason to be able to buy one. And this was a perfect one. So right here we have 19 millimeter spacers. If you know, you know. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I appreciate it. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for all the new content we got coming out. We got to finish up the STI build, and we're going to have a couple more videos coming out on the RS. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that, and I'll see you next time.